Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where we discuss everything about the human brain, unravel the mysteries of the mind and also catch up a little bit on technology. Today we have a fascinating episode for you so don't go anywhere. I'm Dr. Sid Warrior and I will be your guide through the labyrinth of neuroscience. AI language processing tools like ChatGPT and BART have been processing at a phenomenal rate and everybody's talking about it. Seriously, if you go on Twitter, every alternate tweet is how you can use ChatGPT to achieve all of your life dreams. But I got curious, can these models take over the job of someone like me? Can it do the job of a doctor? And specifically, since I'm a neurologist, I wondered if it can be a good neurologist. That's what we're going to check today. We are going to pit ChatGPT versus Bard and see which one makes a better neurologist. Sounds interesting? Let's go. The first question I picked was a scenario. I told both ChatGPT and Bard to assume that they are a neurologist and they are dealing with a patient with migraine, except that the patient is frustrated because despite years of treatment, she's still not getting better. Now, how would they handle it? And my first reaction on seeing the answers was, hmm, this is quite good. Both of the answers were accurate with clear information and the conversational tone was polite. One crucial thing that a doctor needs to do is to assure the patient that they are there and they're committed to making them feel better. In this respect, I felt that Bard did a slightly better job, or should I say a more human job. It also gave specific lines of what it would say to the patient. I found this interesting because let's assume in the next 5-10 years there would be robots in a hospital who have chat GPT or BARD inbuilt for conversation and language. This is very useful. BARD can give you exactly what to say to the patient. Chat GPT on the other hand while being accurate and polite was more academic. It gave more point-to-point -point answers. It felt more mechanical. So in this round, Bard gets an overall edge for the humanness of the response. For the next question, I took this one step further. In the same scenario of the migraine patient, I asked both the platforms, now what will you do? What are the specific medical or other treatments that you will offer to this patient? I wanted to test their medical and clinical knowledge. Here again, both of the platforms actually did quite well. They both gave clear-cut medical options, the names of the medicines. They also gave some surgical options. They also gave some lifestyle and other holistic medicine options. One thing I noticed was that ChatGPT had a slight edge over the detail to which it went on which type of medicine and what specific dosage. While Bard mentioned triptans for management of acute attacks, ChatGPT went one step further and also mentioned antidepressants and anti-epileptics. That was impressive. Bard also talked about biofeedback mechanisms and some relaxation techniques. But overall, I would say that both of the platforms did fairly well in this question. For the next question, I took it up a notch. There is a disease called psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. But in simple terms, this is a patient who comes to you with seizures but it turns out that the seizure is not caused by actual epilepsy. It is not caused by an actual electric fluctuation in the brain. And the reason this situation is difficult is that in many of these circumstances, there might be a feeling that the patient is pretending that they don't actually have the problem, but they're just acting like they do. And this is a very tricky situation to navigate. And many doctors struggle to do this. I wanted to see how the AI algorithms do. And as was the case with the first patient, both the platforms handled it quite well, but with some differences. ChatGPT gave answers by the book. It gave point to point, step one, step two, step three. These are the things that I will do. While Bard, while doing the same things, took on the tone of a more empathetic doctor. To give you an example, ChatGPT said that it would take a detailed medical history, but when it came to explain to the patient, ChatGPT said that it will tell the patient it had PNES, that it is not caused due to electrical fluctuations in the brain, but it is a functional neurological disorder. While Bard again comes up with specific lines to tell the patient, like, I understand you are experiencing seizures and you are concerned about it, but your seizures are not caused due to any electrical damage in the brain but it might be caused due to other things like stress. 
I want you to know it is not your fault and we are here to help you get better. Now this is a line that any patient hearing this would feel reassured. So here again, I have to give an edge to Bard just for the humanness of the response. After this, I took the discussion in a different way. I asked both platforms to assume that they are the owner of a hospital and the head nurse comes in late every day. How would they handle it? The reason I asked this question was that people often forget that being a doctor isn't just about treating patients. It is also about managing a team. ChatGPT went about it like a machine, speaking with the nurse, setting clear expectations, implementing consequences of those actions, considering alternative solutions like hiring the nurse in a different role and implementing preventive measures to make sure this doesn't happen again and giving incentives to other people to come on time. It felt very methodical, very thought out. But again, there was something missing. Bard, on the other hand, did something very interesting. It spent a lot of time justifying its thought process. It talked about why it was taking all the decisions it was taking. It even went as far as to say that because this is a hospital, the nurse coming in late would have direct consequences on patients' lives. And so there is almost a moral obligation to terminate the nurse because you don't want to put patients' lives at risk. It was interesting because this is exactly how a human being would think. Another thing that impressed me about Bard's response was this line in the end that said that it would document the whole process, the conversations, the discussion and the termination because it wants to avoid legal consequences. This round again goes to Bard for those two interesting lines. And finally, for my last question, I asked these platforms something that I've been thinking about. Will AI replace doctors in the future? And is AI a threat to the medical community? And both of the platforms said the same main talking points. It said that they are language processing tools. They process a large amount of data and spot patterns for us. They are just tools to make our lives easier and they're not here to replace us. But ChatGPT was much more clear in that it said, I am not a threat. But Bard was somehow more vague about it. Like, I believe I am not a threat. It is possible that AI will perform some tasks assigned to doctors. I am not yet able to do everything that doctors can. And then there was this one line that Bard said that struck me. It said, I can provide summaries of factual topics and create stories. And now this one addition really got me thinking. Why would Bard say that it can create stories to a question about AI replacing doctors in the future? What does it mean by creating stories? Isn't Bard supposed to be an information gathering service? And why would it assume that creating stories was part of its job profile and it made me run a few more experiments to find out exactly what kind of stories is Bard creating. That is going to be in a video coming out real soon on my channel. So if you're curious about learning more, hit the subscribe button, press the bell icon to get notified and I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So to conclude, what do I make of all of this? I have three thoughts. One. The level of analysis that AI can already do is extraordinary. I'm surprised by the insights and clarity that both of these platforms had on these complex medical issues. Number two, I believe that there are some areas that AI can be better than doctors. And one of them is time. The way the medical system is structured, a doctor only has finite time to give to each patient. But AI, on the other hand, has infinite time. And point number three is the difference between these two platforms. Overall, I felt that ChatGPT was more academic and mechanical. Bard, on the other hand, while it started out feeling more human and empathetic, towards the end of this experiment, I started getting this slightly uncomfortable feeling with Bard. I'm still not fully sure why, but I felt that it's not being entirely honest. And this might be biased because of the experiments that I ran after this that I will be talking about in the next episode. But I feel that we have to be a little bit more careful with Bard's answers than with ChatGPT's. Again, I'm keeping this thought open. I'm very curious to know what is your experience with these two platforms. Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. There's a lot more neuroscience videos coming your way. I will see you soon in the next video. Bye everyone. Take care.